Joining us to speak more about the shooting in Virginia is Henderson Cooper. He's the former LAPD and a former CIA officer. Uh, Coop, thanks for being with us. Uh, Coop, how would this have all played out if the security detail for Scalise was not there? This is really shining a spotlight on congressional security. Do you think it's enough? Well, you know, actually, it could have played out in the worst possible way because they were in an open field with no cover, no concealment, no barriers to hide behind. Uh, it, you know, it couldn't have been worse. Um, and so it's a very difficult situation, and, it's, and we're very fortunate that more people weren't, weren't killed. And it's a, it's a credit to the officers that were assigned to be there, and it's great that there were some officers assigned to be there. Uh, if it hadn't been for that one ranking person being there, uh, there might have been uh, regular congressional people there with no protection whatsoever, and it would have relied upon the response of officers coming to a phone call for help. And, Coop, to that point, are we just in a situation where, look, there are 535 members of Congress, only some of them have the security detail. It's impossible to stop some deranged, crazy gunman from opening fire at certain events, isn't it? Yes, yeah, absolutely impossible. Um, you know, having done this both with LAPD and with and with uh, the U.S. government, it's impossible to to uh, anticipate everything and have people everywhere that they need to be. It'd be great if they could deconflict, uh, you know, uh, events and locations where people are going to be gathered uh, and have some kind of security there. But you simply can't do it all, especially in the Washington D.C. Uh, Virginia environment, where there are so many sites and so many officials. You just don't know what you're going to cover. Uh, now, Coop, uh, this is being said that it's still under investigation. Uh, typically, what is being looked at in a situation like this when the shooter is dead? What is uh, the typical investigation that happens now? Well, obviously, as you heard from all the, the people talking about it, um, a lot of rounds were fired. So they're going to account for every single bullet that was fired. Uh, where it ended up and where it, where it originated, the point at which the, the, the shooter was at, the point at which the officers were at, where they were shooting, and, and, and they're going to, to look at every single option in terms of, of what could have been done to avoid the situation or what could have been done to, uh, to make it end sooner. The two officers are going to be questioned about, about what was in their mind uh, and, and what you know, led to their actions, the timing of it and the effectiveness of it. There are so many issues that come into play. And then you're going to be obviously looking at this person who did the act, uh, though he can't speak for himself. Uh, he has a history. He has a track record. He, there is something that you can follow, and it's, it's like the old saying, you follow the money. In this case, you're going to follow his path. Is it your sense, Coop, uh, well, and obviously they're going to try to find out whether or not he was acting by himself or whether he had any help, but just based on what we know so far, do you have a sense about how that's going to play out? Well, again, when they do the, the bullet count, that's going to be one clue. If there are more bullets than there are guns and, and, uh, and um, uh, shell, I mean, uh, sh shell casings, uh, then it's going to be a clue as to how many uh, people may have been involved. Well, I'm but, sorry. Yeah. I, mis I misspoke. I didn't mean in the actual oh. firing. I meant in terms of, you know, either giving him a place to stay or helping him find the weapons or giving him money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's why I say you follow his path. His path will lead back to his point of origin back at home. Um, everything that came between him leaving home, arriving in, the, in, in that area, and then engaging in the, in the crime uh, is a part of the investigation. They want to know who he's spoken to, where he's been, where he was sleeping, uh, where he ate, what he did for money, um, if he associated with any, any persons. If there are people who saw him associating with people or going to meetings or going to locations, those people are going to be interviewed because they may have keys and clues to, to what this guy's background is and what his motivation was. All right, Henderson Cooper, thank you so much. You are welcome so much.